this video is part two of relative atomic mass and relative isotomic mass video so if you haven't watched part one please do because this carries on directly from where part one left off it's a slightly different type of example here use the data in the table below to find the relative isotopic mass of chlorine 37 Okay, so what we've been given here is the relative atomic mass of the atom, which is 35.45, but we need to work backwards from that to calculate the isotopic mass of chlorine 37. So this is a little bit of maths involved. So again, we use this formula here and we plot in the data that we know. We know the relative atomic mass of chlorine, but we don't know the relative isotopic mass of chlorine 37. So we need to solve this equation to find out what chlorine 37 is. So it's just a case of multiplying all of this out and solving for X, or in this case chlorine 37. So multiply that out and you get 2650.65 you've got your 24.20 times your unknown isotopic mass of chlorine 37. So if we subtract 2650 from both sides, we then get and then divide by 24.2, we can work out the relative isotopic mass there of chlorine 37 which is 35.96 have a go at question 4 here you've got that in your notes see how you go keep in mind that the relative abundances always have to equal 100% pause this and I'll run through the answer with you okay so the important thing to remember here is that the relative abundances need to add up to 100% so in this case we know that the formula is isotopes, relative atomic mass of isotope 1 times its abundance plus isotopic mass of isotope 2 times its abundance. But we don't know the percentage abundance of the second isotope, or do we? If the entire abundances have to add up to 100%, the abundance of the second isotope is going to equal the total abundance, which is 100%, minus the abundance that we know, which is 51.8, which will equal 48.2. So we can just work that out again, and we work out that it's got a relative atomic mass of 108. Example four, you will get a picture that looks something like this, and it's gonna ask you to calculate the percentage abundances of each of these three isotopes. There is no labeling on the side here. So how do you go about it? You use a good old fashioned ruler, okay? So you've got a ruler here. You can measure up that the top peak here comes to 7.5 centimeters and that these two peaks are one centimeters each. So if you measure exactly, you get 7.9 centimeters for magnesium 24, one centimeter for magnesium 25 and 1.1 centimeter for magnesium 26. Now that we know that, we can turn those into percentages of the total height. So the percentage of the isotope of 24 magnesium is 7.9 over the total of all of those heights, which will equal 79%. And you work out the other isotopes exactly the same way. You're just working that as a percentage of the overall length of those peaks. Last but not least is when you don't know the percentage abundance of the two isotopes at all, but you do know the relative atomic mass. And this is probably the hardest one mathematically. So, okay, let's have a look at the question first. Copper has two isotopes, copper 63 and copper 65. Copper 63 has got a relative isotopic mass of 62.95 and copper 65 has a relative isotopic mass of 64.95. You know that the relative atomic mass of copper is 63.54, but you need to calculate the percentage abundance. So 
let x be the percentage abundance of copper 63. So therefore, the percentage abundance of copper 65 has to be 100 minus x, because we know that the two of them added together need to equal 100%. Okay, once you've got that bit, it's all just maths from here. So again, our formula, which equals then 62.95 times x plus 64.95 times 100 minus x. You need to work that out mathematically and solve for x. So you just multiply that second part of the equation out and work your way through and solve for x that way and x equals 70.5. So that means that the percentage abundance of copper 63 is 70.5 and so the percentage abundance of copper 65 has to be 100 minus 70.5 which equals 29.5. That's going to be the hardest one of those that you get. Okay. To work out the relative molecular mass is quite easy now that we know how to work out relative atomic masses. So the relative molecular mass is just the sum of the relative atomic masses of each of the atoms within the molecule. Let's look at an example of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide consists of one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. So if we have a look at the periodic table, you'll see that the mass number of the carbon is 12 and the mass number of oxygen is 16. So we will use those. So for carbon, we have one carbon atom and we get the 12, the relative isotopic mass from the mass number on the periodic table. Oxygen, again, there's two oxygen atoms and we get the relative isotopic mass from the mass number on the periodic table. We add these together, remember work out your brackets first and you get an answer of 44. Relative formula mass is exactly the same. So it's the sum of the relative atomic masses of those atoms in the chemical formula. For example, what is the relative formula mass of sodium chloride? Again, we have a look at sodium chloride. So it's the relative atomic mass of sodium plus the relative atomic mass of chlorine. So we have a look at the periodic table. We look at their respective mass numbers and we just pop those into the equation. There's just one of each of those. So we add them together to get a total of 58.44. So with all of that now, you should be able to answer the booklet questions 1 to 17 and chapter 4 questions 1 to 4. So just following on from here, what I've done is I've put work solutions into the booklet questions for uh, questions five and six. So if you had problems with those, have a look at these work solutions. If not, you can stop watching the video here. Question five, examine the graph and suggest an element which would produce this spectrum, show all working. Okay, so from the graph here, you can put the information into a table which has been done there for you. Isotope 1 has a relative isotopic mass of 10 and an abundance of 81.3. Isotope 2 has a relative isotopic mass of 11 and an abundance of 18.7. So we put those into the formula here. 10 times 81.3 and 11 times 18 and we get an answer of 10.2. Have a look at the periodic table and see which element comes closest. In this case, boron would be the closest. It's not exact, but it's the closest one. So we have to assume it's that element. It's got a mass number of 10.811. Question six, gallium has two isotopes. Gallium 69 with an abundance of 60.5 and the relative atomic mass of gallium is 69.7. So we want to find out the relative isotopic mass of the other isotope. Write down the formula straight away. Again, we know that 69.7 is the relative atomic mass of gallium. So we can pop that in there and we can also put the information for the first isotope in. So it's gallium 69 and its abundance is 60.5. 
we don't know what the relative isotopic mass in is. So we'll put this in as this, so you might want to use an X or a Y. And we know that the abundance has to be a total of 100, so the abundance of this unknown isotope must be 100 minus 60.5. We divide all of that by 100. Then it's just a case of multiplying this bracket out, so we'll get 100 times the isotopic, uh, relative isotopic mass of gallium here, times 60.5 times that again. Now we can just solve for the unknown. And we get an answer here of 70.